live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live Europe. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back everyone, live here in Barcelona, Spain. It's theCUBE's coverage of Cisco Live Europe 2019. I'm John Furrier, my host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Liz uh, Santoni, Senior Vice President, General Manager of the IoT Group at Cisco. Formerly is part of the engineering team, CUBE alumni, great to see you again. Thanks for coming on. Great to be here. So you're in the Always great to see you guys. So you're in the center of a lot of news, IoT, edge of the network, redefining networking on stage, we heard that. Talk about your role in the organization of Cisco and the products that you now have and what's going on here. So I run our IoT business group. Um, similar to what we do with EN, data center, all of that. It has the engineering team, product management team, we build products, solutions, that includes hardware, software, silicon, take them out to market. Really in IoT it's about, um, you know, the technology conversation comes second. It's like what can you deliver in terms of use case and business outcomes that comes first. And it's more about what technology can enable that. So the conversations we have with customers are around, how can you really solve my kind of real problems? Everything from I want to grow my top line. I want to get closer to my customers because the closer I get to my customers, I know them better, so obviously I can turn around and grow my top line. And I want to optimize everything from internal process to external process because it just improves my bottom line at the end of the day. So you a lot of news happening here around your team. But first talk about redefining networking in context to your part because edge of the network has always been what is, you know, the edge of the network. Now it's extending further. IOT is one of those things that people are looking at from a digit digitization standpoint, turning on more intelligence with a factory floor or other areas. How, how, are, how is IOT changing and what is it today? So you gave an example of you know, digitizing something like a factory floor, right? So let's talk about that. So what do customers on the factory floor want to do? They've already automated a number of these uh, factory floors, uh, but what they want to do is get more efficient. They want better EL, they want better quality. They want to bring security all the way down to the plant floor. Because the more and more you connect things, the more you've just expanded your threat surface out pretty significantly. So they want to bring security down to the plant floor because these are environments that are not brand new. They have brownfield equipment, they have greenfield equipment. They want to be able to have control over what device gets in the network with things like device profiling. They want to be able to do things like uh, create zones so that they can do that with, with things like network segmentation, so when and if an attack does happen, they can contain the attack as much as possible, right? Now, what you need in terms of a factory floor, automation, security, to be able to scale, to have that flexibility, that's no different than what you have in the enterprise already. I mean, we've been working with our IT and enterprise customers for years, and you know, they, it, it's about automation, it's security, it's about simplicity. Why not extend that out? The talent that IT has, the capability that has, it really is a connective tissue that you're extending your network from that carpeted space or your clean space into outside of the office or into the non-carpeted space. So it's perfect in terms of saying it's about extending the network into the non-traditional space that probably IT doesn't go into today. Well right, and it's a new constituency, right? So how are you sort of forging new relationships, new partnerships, what is, describe what that's like with the operations technology yeah. folks. I mean at Cisco we have great partnerships with the IT organization, right? I mean we've got more than 840,000 customers and, and our sales teams, uh, our product teams do a good job in terms of listening to customers. We're talking more and more to the line of business. We're talking more and more to the operational teams. Because at the end of the day, I want to be candid. You know, going to a manufacturing floor, I've never run uh, a plant floor, right? There are not very many people <laughs> in the team who can say I've been a plant manager before. They know their processes. They're concerned about 24 seven operation. Hey, I want to be in compliance with the fire marshal. Physical safety of my workers. We come in with that IP knowledge, that security knowledge that they need. It's a partnership. I mean, people talk about IT and OT convergence. Usually convergence means that mm, somebody's going to lose their job. This is more an IT and yes. OT partnership. And most of these digitization efforts usually come in for the CIO level or a chief digitization officer. We've got good relationships there already. The second part is 
Cisco's been in this for quite some time. Our teams already have relationships at the plant level, at the grid level, operator level, uh, you know, in the, in the oil and gas area. But we need to build more and more of that because building more and more of that is really understanding what business problems are they looking to solve, then we can bring the technology to it. Liz, what's that in, in the enablement? You mentioned partnership. That's a good point, because people think, oh, you know, someone wins, someone loses. The partnership is you're enabling, you're bringing new capability exactly. into the physical world, you know, yeah. from wind, wind farms to whatever. Yeah. What does the enablement look like? What are some of the things that happen when you guys come into these environments that are being redefined and, and reimagined or for the first time? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, I, I'd use what our customer said this morning, and what he said was, uh, IT has the skills that I need. All right. They have the IP skills, yeah. they have the security skills. These are all the things that I need. I want my guys to focus on kind of business processes around things that they know best. And so we're working with IT as part of what we're putting this extended enterprise, extending intent-based networking to the IoT edge means IT already knows our tools, our capabilities. We're now saying we can extend that, let's go out figure out what those use cases are together. This is why we're working with not just the IT, we're working with our channel partners as well, who can enable these implementations on IoT implementations work well. Part of this is also a constant you know, learning from each other. Um, we learn from the operational teams is that, hey, you can start a proof of concept really well, but you can't really take it to deployment unless you address things around the complexity, the scale, and the security. That's where we can come in and help. And you can't just throw your switches and routers over the fence and say, okay, here you go. You have to develop specific solutions for this world, right? And can you talk about that a little bit and tell Absolutely. us what you're, what you're doing So, there? if you look at the networking, industrial networking portfolio that we have, it's built on the same catalyst, ISR, wireless APs, our firewall. But they're more customized for this non-carpeted space, right? You've got to take into consideration that these are not sitting in a controlled environment. So we test them for temperature, for shock, for vibration. But it's also built on the same software. So we're talking about the same software platform. You get the same automation features, you get the same analytics features. It's managed by DNA Center. So hey, even though we're customizing the hardware for this environment, the software platform that you get is pretty much the same. So IT can come in and manage both those environments, but IT also needs an understanding of what are, what's the operational team looking to solve for? Liz, I want to ask you about the psychology of the buyer in this market. Because OT, they're running stuff that's just turn it on, put in a light bulb, make it work. What, I got to deploy something? So their kind of expectations might be different. Can you share what the expectations are for the kind of experience that they want to have with tech? I use um, a utility as a great example. And I, our customer from Energy, I think, explained this really well. This is thing that we learn from our customers, right? I haven't been in a substation, I've been in a data center multiple times, but I haven't been in a substation. So when they're talking about automating substation, we work with customers, we've been doing this over the last 10 years, we've been working with that energy team for the last two years. They taught us really how they secure and manage in these environments. You're not going to find a CCIE in this environment. So when you want to send somebody out to like 60,000 substations, and you want to check on, hey, do, do I still have VPN connectivity? They're not going to be able to troubleshoot it. What we did is, based on the customer's ask, put a green light on there, an LED that shines green. All the technician does is look at it and says, it's okay. If not, they call back in terms of troubleshooting it. It was just a simple example of where it's, it's different in terms of how they secure and manage, yeah. and the talent that they have is different than what's in the IT space. So you've got to make sure that your products yeah. also cover what the operational teams need because you're not dealing with the CCIE or the IP experts. So it's the classic market fit, product market fit for what they're expecting. Correct. LEDs, you can't go wrong with a green light. I mean, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know. You know, everybody goes, that's such an easy thing. It's like, well, <laughs> it was not that perceptive to us. What's the biggest thing you've learned as you m move from Cisco engineering out to the new frontier on the edge here? What, what are the learnings that you've seen? Obviously, growing market early, it's only going to get larger, more complicated, more automation, more AI, more things. What's your learnings? What have you seen so far that's a takeaway? So I'll say, uh, you know, I'm still in Cisco engineering. The reason we're in IoT is that 
a secure and reliable network. That's the foundation of any IoT deployment. Right? You can go out and best buy the best sensor, buy the best application, buy the best middleware, but if you don't have that foundation that's secure and reliable, those IoT projects are not going to take off. So it's pretty simple. Everyone's network is the enabler of their business outcome, and that's why we're in it. So this is really about extending that network out, but at the same time understanding what are we looking to solve for. Right, so in many cases we work with third party partners because some of them know these domains much better than yeah. we do. But we know the IP, we, uh, yeah. we're the IP and the security experts and we bring that to the table better than anybody and, else. And over the top DevNet is showing here for the second year that we've covered it here in DevNet zone that when you have that secure network that's programmable, really cool things can develop on top of it that's a great opportunity. Yeah, um, this is, well, I'm super excited that we now have an IoT DevNet um, in, you know, as part of th our entire Cisco DevNet. Half a million developers. You know, Susie, we and team done a fabulous job. There's more and more developers going to be starting to develop at the IoT edge, at the edge of the network, right? So when you look at that is our platforms today with IOX on, so on, on top of it, make this a software platform that developers can, can actually build applications to. It's really about, you know, the, we're ready. ISVs and developers yeah. unleashing those applications at the IoT edge. And with Suzy making that you know, available in terms yeah. of the tools, the resources, the sandbox that you can get, it's like we expect to see more and more developers building those applications at the edge. We got to talk about your announcements, right? So oh yeah. Exciting set What's of announcements. What's the hard news? So we launched four things today as part of extending IBN or intent-based networking to the IoT edge. The first one is we've got three new Cisco validated designs. So think of a validated design as enabling our customers to actually accelerate their deployments. So our engineering teams try to mimic as much as possible a customer's environment. Mm -hmm. And they do this pre-integration, pre-testing of our products, third-party products, and we actually put them out by industry. So we have three new ones out there for manufacturing, for utilities, and for remote and mobile assets. That's one. The second one is we're launching two new um, hardware platforms on next generation Catalyst industrial ethernet switch. It's got modularity of interfaces, and uh, it's got nine expansion packs. The idea is make it as flexible as possible for a customer's deployment because these boxes might sit in an environment not just for three years, like in a campus. They could sit there for five, for seven, for 10 years. So as you know, they uh, uh, adding on, giving them that flexibility, they can keep a base system and just change the expansion mm -hmm. modules. We also launched our next generation industrial router. It actually is the industry's probably first and only full IPv6 capable industrial router. And it's got, again, flexibility of interfaces. We have LTE, uh, we have fiber, we have copper. You want dual LTE, you can actually slap an expansion pack right on top of it. When 5G comes in, you just take the LTE module out, you put 5G, so it's 5G ready. Expansion's all in there. And it's based on yeah. iOS XC, it's managed by DNA Center, and it's edge enabled. So they run IOX, you can build your applications, and uh, load them on. So and we can the build them, third parties can build them. And the DevNet piece here as well. And the DevNet piece is the third one is where we now ha have you know, an IoT developer center in the DevNet zone. So with all the tools that are yeah. available, it enables developers and ISVs to actually build on top of IOX today. Mm -hmm. In fact, we actually have more than a couple of three examples that are already doing that. And the fourth thing is, we depend on a, on a large ecosystem of channel partners. So we've launched an IOT specialization training program uh, to enable them to actually help our customers' implementation go faster. Mm -hmm. So those are the four things that we brought together. The key thing for us was designing these for scale, flexibility, and security. Are these ask capabilities you available today, is that right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. In fact, if you go yeah. in, we're shipping in two weeks, uh -huh. and you can see them at the Innovation yeah. Showcase. Yeah. It's actually very cool. Right. I was going to mention, uh, you brought the ecosystem, I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to ask about the, how that's developing. I can only imagine new sets of names coming out of the, the industry in terms of building on these IOTs, since there's demand for IOT. It's an emerging market in terms of newness with a lot of headroom. 
So what's the ecosystem look like? Um, is there a pattern, is it ISVs, VARs, does it take the shape of the classic ecosystem, or is it a new set of characters, it's or what's the makeup of the, I yeah. of the ecosystem? It's I would say is, in many ways, if you've been in the IoT world for some time, you'll say, you know, it's not like there's a whole new set of characters. Yes, you have more cloud players in there, you, s you probably yeah. have more SIs in there, but it's been like yeah. the distributors are in there, the machine builders, the OT platforms. These are folks who've been doing this for yeah. a long time. It's more around how do you partner and where do you monetize. Yeah. We know where you know, the value we bring in, we rely on, we work very closely with this OT partners, machine builders, SIs, the cloud partners, to go to market and deliver this. You're right, the market's going to evolve because the whole new conversation is around data. Yeah. What yeah. do I collect? What do I compute at the edge? Where do I t route it to? Should I take it to my <laughs> on-premises data center? Should I take it to the cloud? Who gets control over the data? How do I make sure that I have control over the data as a customer yeah. and I have control over who gets to see it? So I think this will be a evolving conversation. Mm, yeah. This is something we're enabling with one of our Kinetic platforms, yeah. which are not launched, it's already launched in terms yeah. of enabling customers to have control over the data and manage their and data as well. And bringing all the portfolio of Cisco security, analytics, Absolutely. management to the table, that puts anything in the world that has power and connectivity to be a device to connect into a system. This is the, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's how obvious it's going to be. It's going to be, it's going to be huge. I'm great, <laughs> uh, it's great that you think it's obvious. That's exactly yeah. what we're trying to tell our customers as how well. To do this it. is about extending this yeah. out. How do we do it? It's the playbook, right? Yeah. So each business has its own unique, there's no general purpose IoT, is there? Correct. It's pretty much on a customer customer. Well, thanks for coming on, Liz, appreciate it. Want to ask you one final question. Um, you know, I was really impressed with, uh, Karen had a great uh, session, Karen Walker had a session yesterday, Impact with Women. We interviewed you at Grace Hopper in tw uh, 2015. Um, Cisco's doing amazing work. Can you take a minute to talk about some of the things that Cisco's doing around women yeah. in computing, women in STEM? Just great momentum, great success story, and great leadership. I, I would say, look at our leadership at Chuck's level, and I think that's a great example in terms of, he brings people on depending on what they, can, what they bring to the table, right? They just happen to be a lot of women out there. Yeah. Um, and the reality is, I work for a company that believes in inclusion, whether it's gender, race, different experiences, different, uh, different thoughts, yeah. different perspective, because that's where truly in terms of uh, you can bring in the culture that drives that innovation. Um, I've been sponsoring our women in science and engineering for I can remember the last four or five years. It's a community that continues to grow. And it, the reality is we don't sit in there and talk about, you know, woe is me and all the things that are happening. What we talk about is, hey, what are the cool new technologies yeah. that are out there? How do I get my hands on them? And yeah, there, we talk about some things where women are a little reticent and shy to do. So what yeah. we learn from other people's experiences. Many times the guys are very interested, so what do you sit down yeah. there and talk? And I said, trust yeah. me, it's not like a, a whining and moaning section. It's more in terms of where yeah. we learn from each other. Peers talking and sharing ideas and Absolutely. innovation and building things. Yeah, and we've got, you know, you look, we look around and we've got a great set of uh, women leaders throughout the company at every single mm -hmm. level, at every function. It's a, it's, it's great to be there. We continue to sponsor our Grace Hopper. We have some of the yeah. biggest presence at Grace Hopper. We do so many other things like connected women within the company. It's just a, I would say, fabulous place to be. Mm. You guys do a lot of great things for society. Great company, great yeah. leadership. Thank you for doing all that. It's phenomenal. We love covering it too. So uh, we'll be at the cloud now today in Silicon Valley, Women in Data Science at Stanford and among other great Definitely events. Definitely a passion of ours. Yeah. You know, we're awesome. one of our yeah. Thank That's you great to hear. Help. Thanks for coming on. This is theCUBE live coverage here in Barcelona for Cisco Live 2018. We're back with more after this short break. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Be right back.